today's show is called Empathy, Ego Balance. Empathy, Ego Balance. Now, I told you in the last show, and I've, a lot of you have talked about things with me in the past. And uh, one of the things I talked about the last show was empathy, empathy, empathy. The five traits uh, that I, I've prescribed by for winning people and winning cases and winning votes or winning an argument or winning a sale is one. We want you to make an entrance and be noticed appreciably. You don't want people laughing at you when you walk in a room. You want to make sure they notice you and they want to make sure that these people are caring about you and excited to see you. You want to build up that momentum and you want them, don't let them down in an entrance. And then two, I run over last week was spend as much time on them. Now this is going to make a lot of sense when we talk about ego, empathy, balance, empathy, ego, balance. I want you to spend as much time on them, your audience, as you're spending on yourself. Now, we always joke about me and my ego, and that's why I call this, 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 this I have a big ego was, was the subcontext of this show. It's because I do have an ego, and we're going to get to that. I'm doing the setup right now, so just relax a little bit. Sit back, have a, you know, just settle, just settle down. I know there's a lot going on out there. I know there's a lot going on out there. But guess what? We still have our own lives, right? So number two was spend as much time on them as yourself. We can't forget about them. Who is them? The other people. Anybody not you is them. Come on, Todd. It's not just about you. Come on, Don, Mr. Trump, it's not just about you. Come on, I, I get it now. Come on, there's other people. There's a lot more other people than just you, right? So spend as much time because you're important. People are counting on you to be right, Todd. People are counting on you to make the right decision, right, Todd? People are counting on you to come on this show, maybe now more than ever, and not say something stupid and send someone off in the wrong path, right? Now, that's the other thing I learned is, I have a lot of Democratic friends that watch these shows. Whew, they don't hold back, man. You know, they're counting on me. Uh, I, you know, and I'm counting on them to, to, to listen and, and get me, give me a break. You know, that maybe maybe there is another side of the story. And if I can show them that I'm looking at their side, maybe they'll look at my side. The number three thing was empathy, empathy, empathy. Can't wait to talk about that today. And uh, number four was have knowledge and command of the solution. And I'm going to give you some of that today. And last but not least, I talked to you about when you exit, be grateful. Always be grateful. Grateful, man. Grateful, grateful, grateful. Those are some of the things. And we picked on Mr. Trump about maybe filling out a couple of those two things, but the other three he had a hard time with. And again, was dominance, influence, steadiness, conscientiousness, and uh, steadiness. So today, what brings us today? Today's story is, where are we at here? Uh, ego. Ego. So the, the title of today, let me just pull up the title. And let's see what we had here. The title of the story was Ego Empathy Balance. I have a big ego, laugh out loud. And then I want you to see the quote that we're doing here along the bottom. Big ego means even bigger empathy. So that's going to make sense when I get done talking here and I get my hat straight. Big ego means even bigger empathy. So a while back, I listened to a guy by the Earl name. Uh, listened to a guy by the name of Earl Nightingale, and he's a 1950s guy. He's a really, really a motivating guy. And if you ever get bored, search him and listen to some of the. He's, he he uh, wrote the book The Strangest Secret. Um, he he did a lot of sales things back in the day, and he would record them on. Uh, like an LP and people would listen to these LPs and they would learn from what he was saying because that's how they communicated back then. But it's not the first time I ever heard about ego empathy or empathy ego. And I want to talk about that today because it dovetails into the disc mentality that we were picking on Mr. Trump about. And it dovetails on success. It dovetails on leadership. And it does certainly fit in the sales category. So if you're Matt and you're out there listening to me, I think this is a good thing for you to pick up on. I know he follows me 
out there. He's a guy that works with me. He's a partner in Pay Surf Systems, and I uh, love him uh, desperately. But I want you to understand there's this thing called empathy ego balance. Empathy ego balance. Now, the reason I'm talking about this today is because I can't get Trump off my brain. I mean, I don't know about all you, even if even if you don't like him, he's on your brain. And I think about the things that maybe I would have done differently. Now, listen, I'm not running for the leader of the free world or anything of that nature. But, you know, it does. I mean, it should all all of us that are leaders, we should reflect you know, we should reflect on all kinds of things, all kinds of things that have worked and haven't worked. And Mr. Trump has been an epic leader. You know, some people will say it, an epic leader of chaos, an epic leader of uh, what well, I heard just the other day, a, ho- a reenactment of Holocaust. I mean, they, they come up with all kinds of things. Those people are not happy with his leadership, but there's just as many excited or almost exuberantly crazy over his leadership style. And we understand now why some people are easier to follow him and some aren't because of the disc mentality. But when you look at a Mr. Trump and I think about the, the empathy ego balance, it makes me, it causes me to pause because I have been very successful in sales in my late twenties, thirties and early forties. I would, that's how I made a living. And, you know, I was doing a lot of these things without really understanding what that's about. And so I just want to cut to the chase today. And I want to talk to you about this whole concept of empathy, ego, balance, empathy, ego, balance, empathy, ego, balance. So I want to talk to you first about ego. And so I have been told I have a big ego, probably by my wife. (laughs) <laughs> probably uh i don't know if phil carroll's watching out there but he's one of my liberal friends i think i think he's probably told me i had a big ego um you know um some of my favorite characters on tv were big ego guys like um william shatner i don't know anybody followed boston legal or captain kirk i mean I was just attracted to the ego size of those men. Magnum P.I., I just kind of liked his ego. How about uh, Sammy on um, Cheers, the bartender behind the bar? He was just always cooking up, you know, moving up shakes. And he's always confident with the women and the people and the men that walked in there. Always had an answer. And if someone called him out on he, he had a really arrogant answer. But he, he was just like a lovable narcissist, right? And I don't want people to confuse ego with narcissist, but I really want you to understand that we all have ego and we all need to understand the parameters of ego. So ego, ego is the eye of self for any person. So any person has the eye, right? The the eye of self for any person. So even the most humble Mother Teresa, most giving, sharing person, they have an eye factor to them, right? So they, they, they have to be aware of themselves. And so we all know I joke about, and I know you know I'm joking. I say, I, I want to talk about my favorite subject, me, right? And so one of the things I think I'm doing for people when I say that is letting them understand that it's okay, you know, you don't you, you need to care about yourself. You need to talk about yourself a little bit. You need to share about yourself a little bit, because if you can't do that, you can't encourage other people to do that, to take care of themselves and to understand about themselves and to feel more importantly, confident about this. So I don't know if anybody remember the show I did nine or three or four shows back on inferiority complexes. You know, you, you, you have to have a healthy ego. You have to, or, or you will be inferior, right? Or you'll feel not good enough. And so I just want everyone to know that we all have an ego and we all need to understand our ego. And I will tell you publicly, I have a big ego, but I'm just going to tell you my big ego 
is not a bad big ego in most cases. Now, listen, I know that there's narcissistic traits out there and there's this, uh, this fine line between believing in yourself so much that you are a narcissist or you're believing in yourself so much that other people will follow you to the ends of a goal and win the game with you. So that fine line in my next book, it's almost done. It's literally done. We're just proving it right now. It's called Drift Again. And there is a chapter in there called the narc. And that's the narc within us. That's this idea that wired differently people, you know, I just want to be careful with this, but I know I am the wired differently guy. And I'm telling you part of my success in my life is the fact that I had such a strong belief in some of my ideas that have been so successful that I could almost call it a narcissistic trait because I believed in it so strong when others didn't that it actually happened. Right. And that's all part of this ego, this, this building of yourself, this belief of your, this idea of knowing yourself and having an ego. And so if anything you get from the beginning of the setup of this ego empathy balance or empathy ego balance, I want you to understand that ego is 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 mandatory. Most salespeople have bigger egos than others. Most leaders have bigger egos than others. That just means they are more confident in themselves. And in the process, they're more confident in the goals and the methods to get those goals that, than, than others in many regards. So their egos are larger and I fit into that, right? But big ego means, though, that if we're setting the course for ego empathy balance, that we need to understand that empathy is the converse to ego, right? The converse to open is close, right? The converse to big is small, right? The converse to ego is empathy. And so I was talking with a, uh, a good friend of mine, um, Jeff Durbin, great guy. Um, I know he watches these shows sometimes. Now, l- listen, he says he watches them. We're going to really find out, Jeff, if you watch my shows, because I'm not going to tell you that I'm talking about you on this show. I'm just going to have to get another one of these phantom phone calls. He calls me at like seven in the morning and says, are you up? This is what I get from him ever randomly. So Jeff Durbin, he's in Indiana somewhere. I'm home in Florida, by the way, back from Indiana. So anyways, I'm talking to Jeff on the, on the phone the other day and I said, can you meet me down here to help me out with a problem? And he's just one of those guys that he said he was just around the corner and he, he could have been in another state. Right. And, and he he would be there. But this time he really was just around the corner. And so I talked to Jeff and I said, Jeff, you know, how's this going? How's that going? I got this idea here. I need a trailer to back it in here to check out if this works and everything. And he started talking about his life and. Um, some of his leadership moves and and some of his ac- actually just some really cool things that are going on in his life that were leadership driven. And it dawned upon me that every time he talked about where he was going as a leader or what he was doing, he talked about other people and how it would affect them. And what got a little more interesting in the conversation was is, I stopped him mid sentence. We were literally standing on the bridge over there at Four Corners in Angola, Indiana. We were overlooking the, the new Tom's Park that I was building there, and he was he was being complimentary of that, and he was being complimentary of me and and other people. And I looked at him and I said, Jeff, you do you know have you ever heard of what empathy ego balance is? And here's a seasoned, smart, fifty eight year old man who's done it all, and he said, No. I don't know what it is. And I said, well, I really would would like you to understand that because you are like one of the most empathy, ego balanced men I've ever met in my life. And that's probably why you're so successful. I said, so you've never heard of empathy, ego balance. He said, no, I haven't. And so I'm like, some of these things that I know or I think or I speak of. I think are rudimentary things and it turns out that they're not. So I'm sharing empathy, ego balance with you. So ego is this idea of self 
in this growing understanding of self and the confidence of self. But empathy, on the other hand, like my good friend Jeff was pointing to me out in his leadership decisions and how he was saying things, right? Empathy is this psychological identification with with or vicarious experiencing of feelings, thoughts, or attitudes of others. So just like last show, we talked about how important number three was in empathy right here. What do we say? Empathy, empathy, empathy. We need to understand now, as I'm trying to bring this message through to the to, to a meaning here, we have to understand ego. But if we understand ego, we need to understand empathy. And if we have a big ego, right, if we have a big ego, then if we're going to have ego empathy balance, we better have big empathy. Todd has a big ego. Well, guess what? Todd understands ego empathy balance. So if I'm going to have a big ego or big confidence in myself or a sureness of myself and an awareness of my goals and awareness of my business plans and an awareness of how things are going to work, guess what? I have to have big empathy. Ego is useless without empathy. And unfortunately, that's why I got Trump on my brain. He misses empathy. My good friend Jeff Durbin, on the other hand, reeks of empathy. But he has the proper ego empathy balance. So I don't want you to get all confused here, but I also want you to understand if you're all ego, 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 you're going to close the deal. Maybe more than likely you're going to lose it because you're just thinking of yourself. You're just thinking of the money. You're just thinking of what you're going to spend it on. You're just thinking of how damn great you are, Todd. You're just thinking how damn great you are, Mr. Trump. This is not why we're in this business. We need a paycheck of some sort. We need to win the person. We need to win the dialogue. We need to win the argument, but we can't do it successfully if we're all ego, if we're all D, dominant personalities. We can't win. We can only argue. We can only fight. You see, here's the thing. Whether you care about D, I, S, or C, you can certainly remember this. Empathy, ego, balance matters. What did I say? Where is where where's my where's my scroll? Where'd it go? Where's my ticker? There it is. Big ego means even bigger empathy. So if I'm gonna say Todd has a big ego, and I'm gonna tell you, Jeff Durbin, I think he's got a big ego. Big, fat, healthy, flipping ego. Only matched more by his big fat empathy. So so what I'm trying to share with you all, and it's a small little lesson that I got for you today, but it's a big game changer. Big ego means even bigger empathy. Empathy, ego, balance. Awareness is a life game changer. It's a life game changer. It's, it's something in your life that if you're aware of it, when you're leading or making decisions, when you're selling or you're talking to your children, you're talking to your wife, you're talking to your husband, you're talking to a liberal, <laughs> right? There's liberals out there everywhere. <laughs> When you're talking, you, you got to have your, your, your ego in check because you want to convince them that the right is is a conservative way, the Constitution and all these things. Right. I'm having fun with you all. I know Phil Carroll's probably watching out there. Give me a shout out one of these days. But how in the world can I get along with a liberal? How can I get along with children? I don't know what is harder to get along with children or liberals, but the bottom line is if I don't have empathy for them, I, I can literally change your life if you just think about empathy, ego, balance. So it just struck me odd that such a great leader like Jeff Durbin, who demonstrates empathy, ego, balance so eloquently, never even heard of the concept 
of empathy, ego balance. How much more could he even be aware? He's just naturally that way. And I'm not really picking on him. I'm just using him as an example. And I think through life that for the most part, I was pretty good with ego empathy balance or empathy ego balance. But when I became more aware of the psychology of it all and the awareness of myself and my ego and where it should fit in proportion with empathy. Right. And so the challenge is for successful people to pair their ego with their empathy. In some of us, in some of us, the challenge is to pair our empathy with our ego because we're naturally more empathetic. I'm not naturally, I'm not naturally an empathetic guy. I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, I'm just my, I'm, I'm naturally more of an ego driven person. And I know some of you are nodding your head. Okay, whatever. It's funny. Ha ha. But, but, but at least, at least we're, we understand that we have a portion of us that is ego. We're all born with an ego because what is ego? The, the, the eye of self and any person, everybody has an eye and everybody has a self and we're all a person, right? So we all have an ego. The size of it matters on, you know, how, how much you work on it, how much you study, how much inferiority you don't want to have, how much wisdom you want to gain and knowledge to control a conversation or win a conversation or a debate or a job or a sale. I mean, come on, ego, 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 baby. Ego drives the world. But here's the problem. Lack of empathy kills the world. That, 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 that's it. So if you're an empathetic person, first and more, most out of the gate, you need to lift your ego up a little bit. It's OK. But more importantly, a guy like a Donald Trump or maybe even maybe even me. If, if I'm aware of ego empathy balance parameters then I'm going to be more successful. And the only way for an ego empathetic balance to occur is for you to do this. Think of the other side. Raj talks to me about it all the time. He says, you know, Todd, that's one of the best things you've ever talked about. He's, he's just like, you know, you, you do put yourself in the shoes of other people. And I, and I think that that's important for all of us. And I think that's important for me to put myself in Phil Carroll's shoes, the liberal, the guy that drives me crazy on the Facebook. I mean, he's my, one of my best friends from high school. Oh, my gosh, he, he went, he lost his mind, right? He's a liberal. <laughs> he, oh, man, this is fun. I mean, we'll find out if he's watching the show. He says he is. We'll find out. But why don't I put myself in his shoes? Why don't I go see him when he's not feeling well, when he's almost wondering if he's going to die when he's sick? Why don't I listen to what he's thinking about and how his feelings make him feel the way they feel to cause him to look at his side of the coin? Right. What are we doing for the other side? You know. How are how how are you how are you honing in your empathy? How 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 are you how are you trying to become a better person? Are you just cussing at CNN? Are you just cussing at Fox News? Are you just driving by homeless people on the street and wondering why they can't get a job? Are you are you you know what what is what what about you and your ego can you help? So I'm closing. I'm just going to tell you a couple of things I've done to curb my ego. One of the first things I did um, a while back with my ego was to try and understand the other side. And I remember being in Las Vegas and I'll make this story really quick. I, I, I was getting my shoe shined and uh, they were nice shoes. You know, the shoes probably cost more than some people's weekly paycheck at, 
you know, at that time and what have you. And I was just uncomfortable with it. And the guy was shining my shoes, man. He was going at it, going at it. I just had enough of it. And I just said, listen, man, I, I want you to sit here and I want to shine your shoes. He goes, but you paid me. You're going to pay me. I said, "I that's right. I'm paying you. Let me shine your shoes because I'm paying you. You can't. It's my money. I'm going to do what I want. He said, OK. So he sat in the shoe shine chair and there I, he had tennis shoes on. But I, bah, 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 bah. I asked him how to put the soap on. He said, put the soap here. And he said, slather that in and then wipe that off. And bah, 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 bah. his shoes, man, his tennis shoes got white. I put thick care of them, got that dirt off. And uh, while I was shining his shoes, I made talk with him. I asked him what it was like to live the life he's lived through the years as a minority. And he went on and he opened up to me and he just let it rip potato chip, man. He went to every president from, uh, what did he start with Nixon? And he went through Carter and he went through Reagan and he went, he just went to Bushy and I listened and I listened and I'm like, man, is that how he feels? Well, no wonder he feels that way, right? Another time I was a little short-minded and ego-minded, and I remember being in California and uh, some panhandlers on the road, uh, the corner there in Hollywood, we were moving around and doing some things. And I had this like arrogance feeling about me because we just sold some deals. And, ah, it doesn't matter. And I'm like, that's not right, man. Ego empathy balance, man. Ego. So I took my shirt off, turned it inside out, and I went out there on the corner and I said, honey, go back in there and shop and I'll come get you when I'm ready. She said, what are you going to do? I said, it doesn't matter what you're going to do. I said, so I went out there and I had a Starbucks coffee cup or something like that. And I stood on the corner and I wasn't going to leave that corner till I got 10 or 15 bucks in homeless tips. I don't know if they call it homeless tips. You know, I was a beggar. I stood on the corner and I begged. It was the most humiliating, most humbling experience probably in my life in many, many ways. But I just like, man, I, I just hated it. And, and, the, and the shame. And then like even it was like a double shame because I really didn't need the money, but I was begging for money. It was literally taking money from probably some guy who was going to give money to a real person who was begging for it and needed it. It was just it was odd, but I, the guy finally walked up to me. He says, man, I don't know about you. Your church, he says, I, do you really need this money? And I remember thinking, what do you, you know, what do I say? And um, I finally looked him right in the eyes and I said, yes, I really need this money. And, and, and he gave me a $10 bill. Now, did I lie to him? No, I didn't lie to him. What I was doing was, was living. What was the term we had here? We had a great term right here, right here, the psychological identification with or vicarious experiencing of the feelings, thoughts, or attitudes of others. Well, yeah, hell yeah, I needed that money because I needed to close the gap. I needed to understand the empathy side of this process. I needed to do the whole circle of the begging individual so I could understand the other side so I could understand empathy, empathy, empathy. Now, was I purposely doing this because I was going to speak about this 10 years? No, it was just me trying to understand the other side. Yeah, I needed the money. I ended up going down the road and gave it to a guy that was a legit <laughs> homeless dude. He thanked me. He saw the whole thing go on and he said, man, that was impressive. And I'm like, well, I think you're impressive. Right. And we moved on down the road. So I want to close and final the, the one of the one of the most uh, difficult things I ever did. And, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, ego and close with this ego empathy balance. And it's a story about um, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, you know, ego, God gave us ego, right? And God gave us the bandwidth for empathy. But the last story about seeing the other side or the last story about purging empathy or the last little nidbit I could give you about empathy, 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 humility, 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 ego, empathy, balance is this. It's a Walmart prayer. 
And, and here's the thing, you know, I felt like my ego was driving me uh, in one way again. And, and in my book, Wired Differently, I talk about my ego. I talk about the drift, right? And the second book is called Drift Again, because guys like me, Wired Differently, people like us, we drift and then we heal and we see empathy. And then all of a sudden we drift again. It's not something that we cure, okay? Ego, ego is something that we need and we have, but it's not something we cure, especially guys like me and guys out there that are ego, ego, ego. We need this balance, balance, balance. Well, God was laying it heavy on me. Too much tot. Too much tot. I want you to get out of the car and I want you to go up to the Walmart doorway there and I want you to get on your knees and I want you to pray. Oh, God, no. <laughs> There's lots of people in this parking lot. Everybody knows me. I'm Todd Saylor. They're going to walk by and they're going to see, see if I'm that. I, I can't get prostate on an asphalt driveway in front of a Walmart parking lot. That's that's crazy talk. My ego's not, not going to allow that. No way. It was easier shining shoes. It was easier being a beggar in L.A. And now I got to go get on my hands and knees and pray in the middle of sunshine, daylight at Walmart in Angola, Indiana. Can I go over to DeKalb or Fort Wayne and do it? No, Angola. Man, I fought that one. But I did it. I did it. The funny thing about that prayer was, is that the hardest part was getting to the door. The hardest part was getting on my knees. The hardest part was putting my elbows on the ground. But once I shut my eyes, it didn't matter. You know? So I guess what I'm trying to say is I immersed myself. I immersed myself reluctantly in the shoe shining example. I immersed myself in empathy in the begging example. And then I'm not trying to elevate myself, but I immersed myself in the Walmart praying episode. And in all three occasions, once I was committed and I had immersed myself into the other side and obeyed and tried to understand the empathy of other people, it was easy. It felt good. So, <sighs> empathy, ego, balance. The awareness of empathy, ego, balance is a life game changer. You know? And hey, any of you that stuck through this whole message with me, I'm proud of you, man, because you got empathy. <laughs> empathy for your old buddy Todd. Well, listen, some of you guys, I called you out today. I hope you give me a shout out. Hopefully uh, we get some we get some hits today that are a little nicer than last Sundays. But um, I really appreciate the follow. And uh, hey, let's do this thing called life together. I'm so proud of you. We're wired differently. We do things differently. We get up differently. We go to bed differently. We try harder differently. We care differently. We love differently. We have empathy differently. We do things differently. We don't quit differently. We love differently. We do all these things, right? And now we understand empathy, ego, balance. I know you can grasp this and I think you can use it. Super proud of you. Have a great day.